The investigation into alleged links between President Donald Trump and Russia has taken another twist. The former U.S. National Security Advisor Michael Flynn has offered to testify before Congress as part of an investigation into Russian interference in the 2016 election. Flynn was fired by the president in February after it was revealed he had discussed U.S. sanctions against Russia with the country's ambassador during the campaign. His lawyer says that he has a story to tell but wants immunity from prosecution. Meanwhile, the Senate Intelligence Committee has begun a public hearing into the Russia links. The White House is facing more questions about whether it leaked classified surveillance information to the head of the House Intelligence Committee, Devin Nunes. Our Washington editor, James Bates, reports. This is the man at the center of the latest storm facing the White House. Devin Nunes, the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee. Democratic members on the committee want him to stand aside from their investigation into Russian interference in the election. The trouble started last Wednesday when Chairman Nunes, without telling his colleagues, rushed to the White House to brief the president and then reporters on new intelligence. Some level of surveillance activity. Information that might just have supported the president's explosive claim on Twitter that he himself had been wiretapped. At that time, President Trump's press secretary faced questions on whether the new information had actually come from the White House. So I don't know why he would travel, brief the speaker, and then come down here to brief us on something that, that we would have briefed him on. It doesn't really seem to make a ton of sense. So I'm not aware of it, but it doesn't really pass the, the smell test. It has since emerged that Chairman Nunes did get his new information at the White House, and the New York Times has reported he met two senior administration officials there. So Press Secretary Spicer was in the uncomfortable position of having his words from last week read back to him. It doesn't seem to make a ton of sense, so I'm not aware of it, but it doesn't really pass the smell test. If you actually go back, I was responding to, I, I was very clear that I said, based on what Chairman Nunez has said, I believe the following doesn't make sense. Perhaps it's now Mr. Spicer's explanations and the White House's actions that do not appear to pass that smell test. The controversy means that the House investigation is for now effectively stalled, but the committee of the other House here on Capitol Hill, the Senate Intelligence Committee, continues its work with a hearing into Russian efforts to subvert democracy last year. The US intelligence agencies all agree Russia was involved in email hacking during the election campaign but this hearing focused on another part of its cyber warfare activities, what was described as a massive and sophisticated disinformation operation. This Russian propaganda on steroids was designed to poison the national conversation in America. The Russians employed thousands of paid internet trolls and botnets to push out disinformation and fake news at a high volume, focusing this material onto your Twitter and Facebook feeds and flooding our social media with misinformation. With its embattled House counterpart surrounded by controversy, the Senate panel is now promising more hearings in the coming days and that it will interview key witnesses, including the president's own son-in-law, Jared Kushner. James Bays, Al Jazeera, Washington. Joining us now on Al Jazeera is Bill Scheider. He's a professor of political uh, public policy, rather, at George Mason University. He's live from Washington. Very good to have you with us again. Uh, Michael Flynn, let's start with that. Resigned in mid-February, saying that he had given the vice president and others incomplete information uh, about the conversations it had with the Russian ambassador. Now he says he has a story to tell. What story might this be, you think, and how much damage can it cause to the Trump administration? Well, the story that everyone is waiting for is, was there any collusion between people on the Trump campaign, Trump campaign officials in 2016, and Russian intelligence? That would be explosive. It could possibly involve criminal activity. Uh, that's what we don't know. We, are, we know that the intelligence service has said that Russia, Russian intelligence tried to interfere with the U.S. election, but there'd be a whole different order of magnitude if there was collusion between Trump officials and Russian intelligence. He's offering uh, Flynn to testify in exchange for immunity from prosecution. Is it common for Congress, Bill, to grant such a deal? Because that would make it extremely difficult for the Justice Department to prosecute him, wouldn't it? 
it would make it very difficult uh, because it would have a, a guarantee of immunity. It has happened in the past. I wouldn't say it's, it's frequent, but it has happened in the past. It depends on their judgment about how, uh, vi how important, how viable his testimony is. Is he the one who knows the most about what was going on and what happened in the campaign? It's members of Congress will have to make that assessment. But it's pretty clear from, his, from Flynn's attorney that he won't testify unless he is guaranteed immunity from criminal prosecution. So uh, he's not admitting a crime there, but he says, his lawyer says, that this has taken on the atmosphere of a witch hunt, uh, a, a partisan warfare. And he doesn't want, Mike, Michael Flynn does not want to be involved in that on any side. And, and to add to all this, Bill, you have the White House leaks, it seems, to Senator Nunes. Uh, this, this Russia scandal just isn't going away, is it? How much damage has this caused to the administration in its first 100 days? Well, it certainly has attacked the credibility of President Trump. It's, uh, it's attacked, attacked the credibility of his operation. Uh, it's raised questions about the legitimacy of his election, which is absolutely fundamental, because a lot of people are still very suspicious. You know, he did not win the popular vote. Uh, and there is no evidence that there was actual manipulation of the vote results, but there is evidence from the intelligence services that the Russians did produce a lot of propaganda, that they did produce information that was injurious to the Clinton campaign, and if there's information of actual collusion, uh, any evidence of collusion between the Trump